Oh, what's up, Facebook? It's Kaumba Day, Kaumba Day, it's Kaumba Day, Kaumba Day, it's Kaumba Day, Kaumba Day, it's Kaumba Day. What's up, sir? What's up? All right, we're about to toast these ancestors. Y'all know I'm about to do my little rant. I got to send out the invites. I don't still trying to figure that out. Somebody that's an expert on Facebook, please contact me and let me know what's up with the invite. When somebody's already on your timeline, why do you have to invite them? I don't understand. All right? Um, I didn't get a chance to do my hair this morning, but it's Kaumba Day. Kaumba Day is Kaumba Day. Kaumba Day is Kaumba Day. Kaumba Day is Kaumba Day. What's up, Brian Tyner? Tyner? How you doing, sir? We're about to toast these ancestors. It is Kaumba. Today is Kaumba. So before we get started, bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out. If anybody out there that understand this whole inviting thing that that um, Facebook got going on with inviting people once they pop up on your timeline. If you're already on my timeline, why do I have to invite you? I don't understand. Um, what's up, um, Brother Sa? You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to welcome you to the Daily Toast where we talk it up a little bit and we start... Um, we start the day off by toasting our ancestors. But first, in order for us to toast our ancestors, we got to make sure that we healthy. You understand what I'm saying? So the first thing we do on our show, on this show, is we have to drink water. Now, I like to start off with about 32 ounces, right? So I'm going to drink four of these glasses because each of these glasses is eight ounces. So bear with me, but grab you a glass, because this, this, is, this is a grown person show. We toast our ancestors with glass. Our ancestors like that clinging sound. That clinging sound bring them to us, right? That clinging sound, right? So when we lift up the glass and we toasting, we want to make sure that we're using glass. Now, I got another glass here because I use this one so that you can see the ambrosia that I pour. I got um, a couple of samples of different ambrosia that I'm going to talk about today, and I also have my sample glass, right? Because I have some lemon lime that's been sitting here, lemon lime and ginger that's been sitting that I'm going to share with y'all and I'm going to transfer to the next bottle. And I have an experimental root beer, but this one has, um, this one has cinnamon. This one has turmeric. This one has ginger. This one has burdock. And this has what I call the death eater vinegar in it. So, you know, we're going to sample that. It's been sitting, been sitting. And I wanted to experiment with it and see how it was doing. So we're going we're gonna to run across that right now. But today is Kaumba. It's a day of creativity. The modic principle that, that we need to watch out on this day for is called order. Um, the hermetic law is cause and effect. The male... The male name for a child born on this day, on Kaumba, is Kwame. The female name is Ama. All right? Now, according to the Emotional Emancipation Circle, um, in Wolof, the day will be one, two, three, four, five, six. In Wolof, the day will be Jup or Jub, and that means good character, just, honest, and righteous. Right, so these are principles that manifest during this day because I got it all categorized on the day. Of course, these principles manifest in our lives um, different times during the week, but you know, um, today and specifically, specifically, I want people to be looking for certain aspects, right? But of course, all the principles interact with us on a daily basis. But we have we are refining it so that we can have our eyes prepared to be looking for these principles and people that we work with and situations that we work with. So today will be job or job, good character, just, honest, righteous. In a con ethics, the day will be the day of strong character. All right? Um, now, um, in traditional Yoruba, the day will be Oju Inu or Insight. Shouts out to Brother Shaka Siung Hasbury. So we already talked about some of the other principles. So family, 
Let's get it popping. All right, I'm about to drink these 32 ounces. Water up, water up, drink it up. That's eight. Let's drink, come on. Lift up your glass, drink. How you doing, Miss Charpe? How's my little son doing down there? Well, he ain't little no more. How's Mr. Mamu doing down there? Um, all right. We just we uh, take another one of the 16 ounces. Come on. There's no better way to start your day than with some water. Now, on my 24 ounces, I'm experimenting after I did my fast. I'm experimenting with this herb called rhodiola. Right? This is called the golden root. So I'm going to take two of those right now. This is my 24th ounce. I tried to 32 ounces to start the day off. I would suggest some of y'all do a similar number. Don't have to be exact number because some of y'all ain't as big as me. Some of y'all bigger than me. And some of y'all smaller than me. For those that want to know about rhodiola, let me put it up close so that you can see how to spell the name. This herb is called the golden root. I did a video on it. It's an adaptogen. So those of you that have a lot of stress going on in your life, relationship stress, uh, job stress, uh, 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 just niggas in your life stress type shit. You know what I'm saying? Rhodiola is good, right? It, it, it's, supposed, it's an adaptogen, so it helps... It helps your body adapt to what's going on um, in the world, as well as a lot of other benefits, right? So, you know, you can check out the video about it. I'm experimenting with it on a clean body. One of the things I decided to do after I did my 21-day fast was that when I start experimenting with herbs, I would um, I, I would first do a, a, a fast to cleanse my body out so that I can focus specifically on that herb and start looking for some of the results. So when you come into me, you're going to come and we're going to be experimenting. Like I got to go back and do some stuff with the black seed oil because my body wasn't all the way clear. So I'm going to do like a three-day fast before I get back on the black seed and see how I feel. But this is the last one of 32 ounces. Man, all right. So to the toast. Now, this is my, the old-fashioned bottle, right? This right here is a bottle of what I call the Death Eater. For those that don't know what the Death Eater is, the Death Eater, once again, is a mixture that I came up with, which is used dandelion root and burdock root. Now, unlike the other ambrosias, this does not use green tea as the base. This used just the dandelion root and the burdock root tea as the base. I have trained one of my scobies to be able to uh, survive in this and to be able to produce a drink from it. Now, for those that don't know, dandelion and burdock root are two of the most under, under, they, they, they're the two most powerful herbs that people have never really heard of, but people see them every day. People try to kill them every day. Dandelion root, you can walk outside in some of these lawns where people is trying to kill them, and dandelion root still come back. Now, dandelion root, dandelion root is historically known, and I want y'all to say this is what the ancestors taught us, right? This is what the ancestors say. Dandelion root heals death. Look at some of the ancient writings on, on dandelion root. Dandelion root is a powerful powerful herb and the reason people don't big up it is because they can't make a lot of money from it why because some of y'all know how to go to the woods and pull this stuff some of y'all gonna be bold enough to go out to the woods into an area that's not polluted and look for dandelion root and start pulling it up and getting the root yourself right i'm saying dandelion root is one of the best herbs for black people because dandelion root is a herb that in a sense lives in existence like us it is persecuted People are hunting it down. People are trying to kill it. 
but still it rises, right? You could put concrete down, dandelion root, and dandelion, dandelion plant is going to find a way to crack that shit and come through. Dandelion root is one of the most powerful roots, and, it, and it's a prime example and a representative of us. And I would suggest that all of us, in some form or fashion, find ways to put dandelion in our diet. Whether you're taking dandelion root tea, whether you're doing a death eater drink, or whether you eating dandelion greens, right? Dandelion, you know what I'm saying, or drinking the, the tea from the whole plant. So I'm using dandelion root and burdock root. For those that don't know burdock root, burdock root is the root if you're old enough. When you used to go out and play, you know what I'm saying, before all this manicured grass, you go out to one of the lots. Burdock root was the little, um, or burdock was the little birds that when you ran through the grass, that you will go in the house with, and you have to pick the birds off. That's burdock. Burdock does almost everything that dandelion does. So I mix these two herbs, and these are common herbs in areas where my people live, in the cities in America. Dandelion root, burdock root. Burdock root look like a big green, and actually it's edible too. But here we go. So I'm going to pop it. I don't know how it's going, what it's going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all already seen one explosion with me. But I'm going to pop it, and we're going to do, do toast our ancestors. Shouts out to uh, Elder Greg Arnold. Welcome, welcome. Woo! Yeah, all right. At least it didn't blow all the way up. So. My fault. Let's do that. Peace to Jamal Edwards. This is that homemade brew that I love so much. So, first giving honor to the creator by whatever name you choose to call that creator. Now, those of you that have ancestors that you want, want me to celebrate, right, that you want me to toast, feel free to post them up. If you have your own glass and you drink your health drink, we drink water together, we drink a health drink together, and then we toast the ancestors, right? Those of you that's out here doing and following the process, right? Y'all are going to toast up your own ancestors. But those that are not, and you want me to toast them up, all you got to do is just right on the timeline, right on the timeline, the ancestors that you want me to call out. Right? Right now, we're toasting the creator by whatever name you choose to call the creator. We call the creator that great energy, the, 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 the builder of the universe. Right? We toast and we lift up our glass to that ancestor. Right? We salute that and We salute the creator and we say, Ashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. And it's very important, family, that we always remember our personal ancestors. We remember our mothers and our fathers, um, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our aunts and our uncles, our friends and our cousins our nieces and our nephews, those adopted young people that we may have had in our lives that may not be here anymore, that made their transition. We lift our glass to them and we celebrate them because each of them, in some form or fashion, helped us become who we are today. We toast them and we remember those ancestors because it's always, remember them, it's always important to remember our ancestors because I, I say this a thousand times. I say it all the time. Hell for Africans is being forgotten. So however we pour libations, we always need to always remember our ancestors. And we need to personally remember our, our ancestors that we directly come from. Because Marcus Garvey got thousands of people pouring for him, right? Malcolm X got thousands of people remembering him and reading books about him right now. Martin Luther King got a lot of people reading about him. I just took a book back to the library about Harriet Tubman. But there's no books about my great-grandfather. So I'm toasting up my great-grandfather, and I'm toasting up your great-grandfather. I'm toasting up those individuals who suffered through the oppression of America and made sure that they was able to live in a, in a style and in a fashion so that they could lay down seeds to, to make it possible for me to exist right now. So we toast those ancestors. We toast those, those individuals that may be forgotten unless we call their names. So I'm going to start with my family line. And if you have any people that you want to post up, by all means, post them up. I first start with Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosie Lee Tilly, Georgia and William Walton, Christopher, or my fault, Chris and Fanny Gasson, um, 
Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris. I call on Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown. I call on Wash Ellis. I call on Margaret Ellis. I call on Wash Ellis Jr. I call on Cecil Ellis. I call on Alvaro Brown. I call on um, my aunt, my aunt Barbara Twiggs. I call on my aunt Gina Gaines. Right. I call on Jamon Jones. I call on um, on John Fillard. I call on uh, 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 Montague Pittman I call on um, Jeremiah Tappan. I call on uh, Pastor Yusuf Weston. I call on um, I call on Dr. Marianne Williams. I call on Kojo Kamau. I call on um, uh, uh, I call on No More X. I call on Sepet Ma Ra. I call on uh, Mark Walsh. I call on Elder Farmer. I call on Elder Hairston. I call on Elder Donaldson. I call on Elder Millie Dixon. Um, I call on Tony Clark. And that's all I can think of right now. So I lift up my glass to to those ancestors, and I lift up my glass to your ancestors. Hopefully, you you have enough foresight to um, to call in, call on your ancestors at this point in time. All right, because it's important, family. We have to realize that our ancestors, our ancestors are rooting for us. Our ancestors want to help us, but we have to give them the energy so that they can help us. Right. We got to, you know what I'm saying? We got to remember them because a lot of times, I'm a, I won't go all into that, but, you know, and salute your ancestors, right? Salute your ancestors. So we toast our ancestors and we say our shade. From there, from there, we move from our ancestors, which is the past, we move to this present moment. Today is Kuumba. We toast the day. Because the day is where our power lies. So we toast the now and we lift up our glass and we, and, and we salute the now. Shouts out to Brother uh, Nehemiah for, for stopping in. Next, we move from the present moment to our future. We toast our children, our children's children onto infinity. We toast our children in advance so that they will toast us. We realize that everything that we're building and everything that we're not building we, we, we remember that the work that we're doing or the work that we're not doing, all of it, all of our actions and all of our inactions will affect our children and our children's future. So we lift up our glass, especially if we're legacy leaders, especially if you're culture builders and nation builders. We lift up our glass to salute our children, to remind us of the work that we still have to do. And we toast and we say our shame. Last but not least, I salute you, family. I salute you, right? Any struggles that you may have, any, 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 any things that you need to come into your life, I actually lift up your glass because our ancestors are present and ask for it, right? Ask for it, declare it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, put it on the timeline because people, people are always, always, always tuning in. Right now, the day is Kaumba, right? The day of creativity. Right. Um, shouts out to uh, Reed Collins. Thanks for watching. Um, so we toast and we say Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I wish you peace, power, joy for 100 years. Woo! Man, that death eater. Oh, that death eater is the bomb. All right. So. For those that don't know, on August the 11th at 7 p.m., we have a brother coming by the name of Wakesa, right, from the Aya Educational Institute in Atlanta. He's going to come up, and he's going to do a workshop for, for um, some teachers. And then in the evening, he's going to do a free workshop for the community um, that's August 11th. That's that's uh, Nia, right? I'll post this up so that everybody can see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it up again. And what he's going to do is the inject injected racial scripts, countering the instructional design of racism and anti-blackness, right? So now 
what, what he's talking about is what you heard a lot during Obama's administration. He's talking about narratives, right? For those of you that really paid attention to um, um, what they did with, with um, Obama, uh, with uh, Bin Laden, right? When they killed him, right? One of the major pieces that they was concerned about was his narrative, right? Uh, and for a long time, up under the radar, what a lot of people didn't understand was that part of European or West Asian, um, part of the part of their part of their policies, part of their strategy, when they conquer people, when they conquer somebody, they try to destroy the narrative, or they try to control the narrative because the story is more important then actually what happens to the individual in life is the story that is important. And a lot of us don't know this, right? So a lot of us, you know, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't take care of stories like we used to as African people anymore. It's the story that's important, all right? Shouts out to Brother Harold Hammer Folsom. Long time no see, my friend. How are you doing? So um, the brother's coming, and he's doing a workshop. And um, on Saturday, he has a two-part workshop, which is $99, and it's part of the Warrior Healer and Builder Seminar. And he's going to be talking about turning superior, inferior conflict into a circle of trust. He's going to be talking about emotional authenticity. He's going to be talking about managing the power of recognition and touch. And then in the afternoon, he's going to start talking about storytelling for heal healing, failure to success, Grand stories of success, family story, stories, warrior and hero, hero and builder stories, right? And that's going to be um, $99. And that's going to be at the Millennium Community School. Anybody that's interested, because I'm suggesting everybody that's trying to make a major change in their life, you really need to check out this workshop, right? You really need to take time and start investing in yourself. Stop playing. Invest in yourself, family, right? Because you're worth it, right? And, and, and the things that you're going to do in the future are going to need for you to start making investments in yourself, right? Those of you that work jobs, if they value you, they will send you on a training, right? Them trainers don't be free, fam. What they do is they send you on the training so that you can bring back information to help the business. So now, what is the primary business in your life? The primary business in your life is your life. So why not learn and gather tools that can make your life better. Many of us are telling telling stories of, of defeat. Many of us are ter telling terrible stories. And we wonder why our children don't want to follow in our footsteps. Who want to follow a loser? So even when we are in defeat, there's a way that we can tell our stories that will empower the next generation. Like, for example, I'll give you a prime example. Um, remember the Alamo. Now, for those that don't know about the Alamo, Alamo is a, is, is a fort in Texas where Americans got their ass handed to them, right? They got overrun and conquered. I think Davy Crockett might have been down there. Dan, Daniel Boone, these, these super white people who was able... Um, um, Daniel Boone was able to shoot a fly out the sky or whatever, and, and you know what I'm saying? Super, all these super legendary individuals are down, down here and got their ass handed to them, right? But that's not the story they told. The story that they told was about a, 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 a defeat in which an individual went down fighting, and the story was so exciting that it encouraged other young people to be like, hell, I want to go out like that. Right? See, in this, we don't tell our stories like that. You know, like when we talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma, oh, we got, you know, that was horrible, blah, blah, blah. We're not even looking into the stories. We're not even looking into the fact, right, that they had to call in the National Guard. I want you to understand this. When they call in the National Guard, they call in the National Guard in because the motherfuckers who was trying to get into the town before couldn't get into the town. So they had to call the actual military to come and get your people and get your people up out. This meant that your people set up a line of defense and defended their borders to their last. As a matter of fact, they did it so well that these motherfuckers had to drop bombs on them. 
the first bombing in America was not 911. The first bombing was was Tulsa, Oklahoma. Why? Because the black people that was there did not surrender. They did not give up. They would not allow these motherfuckers to come in and take their shit. If you're going to take what's mine, you got to take my life. This was the mentality. But we don't tell a story like that. Oh, you know, Black Wall Street, we got beat. Yeah, and they took everything. No, fuck that. No, they didn't take it. No, no, no. Rather than because because they didn't, there they, wasn't nothing left for them to take. Because rather than just give it up, you know what I'm saying? We basically fought until there was nothing left. And that's what, that's what a people who build, that's what a people that's about building does, family. All right? I don't, I don't mean to get all off into that. But uh, we're going to finish the toast. So right here. I got a mixture of uh, lemon, my fault, lime, oranges, apples, cinnamon, ginger. I'm going to pour the rest of my drink in here. Of course, I like it, but I love smoothies. And we're going to do a smoothie. Ambrosia smoothies. That's right. For those that don't know what ambrosia is, I'll put a link up. For those that's interested, hit me up. This is a health drink. It's a probiotic. You're probably reading a lot about probiotics in the news right now. Probiotics is a big thing right now. And, and they're very simple to make. Very simple. Prebiotics, probiotics. Prebiotics is basically found in fresh, um, fresh vegetables, especially leafy greens. You know what I'm saying? If you can eat them raw like in a salad. Prebiotics. Probiotics are healthy yeast and bacteria that you can take into your body. And a lot of us, we used to get this back in the old days because we used to eat a lot of fermented foods. Right? But a lot of us don't really get true fermented foods anymore. Even the pickles we get nowadays in most cases aren't really fermented. Right? They're just soaked in vinegar. And that vinegar is dead. Right? We... We, we need to get back to learning how to make our own stuff. And basically what I did with that ambrosia was went back and learned how to make some of our old stuff. So I'm going to make a, a smoothie real quick. doing that, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today on my YouTube, on my YouTube show. First, first off, we're going to be talking about um, Brother Wakesa coming to town. I know y'all like, well, we just talked about that, right? Because this whole storytelling piece is very important for us, family. We really need to learn how to tell the stories, especially, especially those of you who are involved in your family reunions, learning how to tell your family story in a way that will encourage your young people. You know what I'm saying? Because some of us come across like, you know, we were sharecroppers and we was caught up in slavery and, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Stop telling them goddamn loser stories. Liven it up. You know what I'm saying? Yo, some of your ancestors sacrificed and were in situations so that you could be born. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Some of them gave up their lives for you. And we need to learn to tell the stories like that. Some of y'all are doing real good right now. And you're doing real good right now because some of your ancestors just stayed where they were. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we need to really learn to really get, get into some of these stories. But anyway... What we're going to talk about yesterday, I did part one on permaculture, right? And for those that don't know what permaculture, permaculture is a, a new movement where, in effect, it ain't even really new, but it's basically where people are getting back into living in the ways that our ancestors lived. But it's sort of like a mix because it, ain't, it don't mean that we get rid of the TVs and we get rid of the technological advances. We try to learn how to use the technological advances to help us build up the culture rather than helping us destroy the culture, right? Now, I told y'all about 
Because I'm going to give it to that permaculture, right? I told y'all about how yesterday a lot of a lot of rich people that are into technology, right? Um, Silicon Valley individuals. A lot of them are now building shelters, bomb shelters, right? Because, and you can look this up on um, on YouTube, they're building bomb shelters because a lot of them understand that the work that they're doing, the work that they're doing is basically putting people out of jobs, right? So for every job that each of us are doing, they are coming up with logarithms where they can start programming machines to do some of the stuff. You don't believe me? Look at what they're doing with health care or elder care in Japan. They're, learning, they, they're practicing using robots. So a lot of y'all that's working in nursing homes right now, you need to be looking. You, you might be needing looking to upgrade your skills, right? I, I, I hope y'all don't think that they're just talking about driverless cars um, just because it's cute. No, they're talking about driverless cars because they want to use that as, as for business, right? So drive cabs and truck driving, you know what I'm saying? Maybe some jobs of the past. Um, a lot of us go to the, before we go to the doctor, a lot of us are going to Google or a lot of us are going to Alexa and asking her questions. Right now they got Watson in, in um, for those that don't know what Watson is, Watson is a super computer program made by IBM. They got him going to medical school right now. So Watson is going to be able to diagnose shit before you even go to the doctor office. So a lot of doctors and, and lawyers and, and, and people, a lot of people that used to be gatekeepers for information, a lot of them are going to be eliminated. So a lot of these individuals in Silicon Valley understand that when all these jobs are eliminated and as fast as they're going to be eliminated without, being, without something to take their place, people are going to rebel and people are going to be crying for blood. And they're going to be crying for the blood of people who got shit. So what they're doing is they are now preparing their life. Um, this is a little bit too thick for me. They're now preparing for this outcome. So what they are doing, so what they're doing, they're building survival shelters, complete with guns, you know what I'm saying, complete with everything they need to protect themselves because they believe that when people come, they're coming for blood, because there will be no more jobs. And for those of you that don't understand how the economic system works, you trade your labor for money so that you can buy shit, right? You, you trade your, your labor and your time so that you can buy shit. If I no longer need your labor, I'm not going to give you money. If you don't have money, you can't buy the shit that you like and the shit that you need, which means that your family will be hungry, which means that eventually... People are going to riot if there's not no universal health care, no universal payments going out to people because there will be no jobs. So now they got these individuals doing these little survival things, right, getting ready for it. Now, what I'm trying to tell you all and the reason I'm looking at permaculture and the reason I keep on talking to you all about tribe building family, because if something does hit the fan, I'm not saying that it's going to hit the fan. What I'm saying, if something does. We need to be close enough to our families and close enough to our tribes, those individuals that we could trust with our lives, that we can go on and we could go on and take over something, right? And just wait this shit out. We can have a place we're going to meet because people talk about building uh, bug out bags and running to the woods, but in order for most of y'all to get to the woods, the only way you know how to get to the woods is to the expressway. And I'm telling you, the first thing that's going to close down is going to be the expressway. And one of the places you don't want to get caught is the expressway. So what I'm telling people is, as a tribe, we have to decide on certain buildings that we are going to take over. Right? And we're going to have to have warriors, and we're going to have to have nation builders, and we're going to have to have council of elders so that we can keep the peace in that place so that we can learn how to live together as a tribe. Right? We're going to have to have order running in that shit. Because we're gonna have to share the food that we have, and we're gonna have to have we're gonna have to have parties going out to get food, just in case it's there. If there's not enough, all right, Shaka, you gonna get the cap in the cup? The who? I don't know what. He, what the hell is the cap in the cup, my friend? This is a bigger bottle of that Death Eater. 
I'll make it by the, I'll make it by the gallons, family. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. All right. So I'm about to go to my uh, my other show on YouTube because I got to get up out of here. I got to go to the main library and I got to go pick up my girls. And we have an ancestral celebration that's going on that I have to make sure that they have everything they need so they can get that done. So if there's any questions or any comments, feel free to post it up. Now the only thing, the only, if there is a negative about the workshop, the only negative your cap from the bottle that fell in the drink. No. Here you go right here. It's attached to the bottle. This is one of my old school, this is one of the old school bottles. Shouts out to Elder Daryl Green. All right. Um, so um, so family, what I'm saying is, what I'm talking about is what they call permaculture. And it's basically, it's basically people getting back to tribal ways of living. It's ba basically people getting back to um, traditional ways of living, right? Being able to say, hey, um, I create at least 30% of my food. All right? I create at least 30% of my food, my own food. You know what I'm saying? As my family or my tribe, we work together on this, 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 this plot of land or we bought a building and I mean, because in this book that I'm going to be using, they talk about 60, about 66 different projects all over the world. A few of them in the United States. I didn't find any in the Midwest, right? But I do know of one that was in Tennessee because I had the pleasure of going there. I, I had the pleasure of going there with the gathering. And we went there and we had a meeting and they provide us the food, and the food we ate came directly from the land. The eggs we ate, it's fresh. They went out and got them that morning for us. I mean, it was um um, it was a it was a, I can't remember the name of it. I think it was in Tennessee. All right, but we need to get something popping like that here in Ohio, right? African center, unapologetically African. So if the shit go down. We ready. All right, so this one is a little bit smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this right here so that y'all can see this one. As y'all can see, this is my breakfast. There we go. There we go. Let's do our health drink, fam. Hot damn. That death eater. Up under this stuff. Oh my God. Mm. All right. So now I got to get and do my YouTube video. So let me share some stuff that's going to be going down on a YouTube video. I got to hurry up and get up out of here. So, right here sourdough bread, right? I'm in the fermenting piece. A seed, family. All right. So, got the sourdough bread. I'm about to put that in the oven so that I can talk about that on my YouTube show. I'm about to make another pizza. Sourdough. Sourdough that I make, right? All from ambrosia, right? Boom. We're going to be talking about, I'm going to be sharing that information as I'm talking about permaculture. I got to bottle up some of the root beer. And some of the lemon, lime, and ginger. So I just need y'all to understand that, you know, in Giami, I, you know, I, I'm beyond the talk. I'm beyond the talk. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set up a way of life that we could pass down to our children. That's what we need to be working on, family. All this, all this dreaming and and vision boards and shit. I mean, it may work for some, it ain't really work for me, right? But what what's working for me? Is getting up off my ass and doing the work, right? We need more workers, fewer dreamers. We need more workers, fewer dreamers, right? We need motherfuckers with dreams who willing to work. You know what I'm saying? We need the mixture, right? Because you know, uh, you some of you, some of you Martin Luther King, you got dream motherfuckers, 
Y'all don't do no work. I mean, it's almost like y'all think just because you got a dream, motherfuckers supposed to rally around you and, and support you. No, you need to get your ass up and do some work. And when people see you working, then they don't mind joining you. But a lot of y'all just want to dream and, and have conversations and people are supposed to just snap into consciousness after having a conversation with your marvelous ass and get to work. It don't work like that. Never have. Never will. So stop playing. Stop, stop, as, as they used to say back in the old days. You know, stop, stop intellectually masturbating, right? So, family, I want to thank all of y'all for tuning in. Like, share, hit that alarm button. You know what I'm saying? You can use me to get up early in the morning. On um, Imani, on Imani through. My fault on the mojo through Nia. I'm up at about 4 415 doing this. What's up, Miss Jackson? What's up, Dr. Jackson? Give it up for uh, Dr. Stephanie Jackson. Just came in the house. All right. So um I'm about to get off of here now, dear. You gonna have to go on and uh rewatch. But make sure y'all like and share. I'm trying to build up the numbers on Facebook. Those of you that are interested in the Nguza Saba Challenge, because we're moving rapidly towards um, Kwanzaa, and if you want to, um, and if you want to change, change something in your life, using the 21 Day Challenge, as far as the Nguza Saba, as far as the Nguza Saba Challenge, man, finally you can build it up. I'm telling you, we have a method to the madness. We have a method to conquer the madness, and it comes directly from our ancestors. We have we developed this whole idea called life care, right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I I got I just have to share this with y'all, right? Life care. You got health care. Fuck you know. Fuck, you know. Ain't even health care. The process of harnessing, harnessing, and directing our shade by a systematic use of life giving principles. Using our principles, the principles that our African ancestors laid out for us to guide our life energy, which is that ashe, which is ashe, which is life energy, and the life energy around us to move us to where we need to be, right? A lot of us, family, a lot of us is wasting a lot of energy. We're wasting a lot of life energy, right? On bullshit, on sadness, you know what I'm saying? So, hey. Anyway, I'm about to go do my YouTube show. I'm out. Facebook, I love you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Y'all see I'm getting my weight back after that 21-day fast. Matter of fact, I'm heavier than I was before I started the fast. So another fast is coming up. It ain't going to be quite as long as a 21-day fast. And those that are scared, those that are scared of the 21-day Angusa Saba Challenge because you think I'm asking you to fast for 21 days, that was for me. You shape and you mold the 21-day challenge for yourself. The major piece of the challenge is, one, changing your mind. Now, if you want to get into change your body, we can help you with that. But it's about changing your mind. Every day, you call out these, these deities from other people's cultures, which shows that you've been dominated, which shows that we've been conquered. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, look that shit up. You're celebrating other people's deities you're celebrating other people's concept the only thing i'm saying is throw some african flavor on that you know what i'm saying throw some african throw some african flavor on that what's wrong with having umoja on monday i'm getting on that i'm getting on at the end talk about how you use that energy say it right so now first off when we're using that energy right when we when we set up a systematic process our ancestors teach um, it's a book called The African Openness to the Tree of Life. Hold on. Y'all, matter of fact, this might end up being my my whole my whole pop, uh, broadcast. Thank you for jumping on, um, um, Miss Brooks. Miss Jack, Jackie! Right? Thank you for jumping on. And she's going to ask questions because she's not shy like that. And that's what I love about it, right? So now, she says, I'm getting on at the end. Talk about how to use that energy, that I say that life energy, right? It's a book 
that I found when I was at Ohio State. For those that was Ohio State with me, y'all know I used to hang out at a place called the Black Studies Library. And way back in the Black Studies Library, there was an old black book that didn't even have the words on the cover that I just picked out. And it was called The African Openers of the Tree of Life. This book totally changed my life. This book is available on Amazon. This book is, I mean, and you could go to uh, Regent Press and get it. Or you go to basically um, to my page, giamijourney.com, and you could buy it through us. But anyway, in here, they have a bunch, is a bunch of proverbs. And one of the proverbs, oh, I can't. One of the proverbs state, let me try to do it from memory. It says, the best life is achieved through the engagement with systematic processes. And the last part says, the best life is, is built on a systematic use of life-giving principles. Our ancestors really believed in systems. We believed in processes because when the sun rise and the sun set, there was a process. When the stars moved through the sky, that was a process. When the uh, when 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 the Nile flooded, that was a process. When the rivers around us flooded, that was processes. There was processes in how we farmed. There was processes in how we hunted. There was processes in how we raised the cattle. So we were surrounded by processes, right? So. Our ancestors believed that the best life was built upon systematic processes. So now what I'm saying is, let's start adding systematic processes to our life. And not just any systematic process, culturally appropriate systematic processes. Many of us are, have the right idea in fighting against the enemies that we have, but we're using culturally inappropriate ideas to get there. Right? Many of us think that success is going to come to us by us using the same rules as everybody else. But everybody else is plugged into their culture. Asians are plugged into their cultures. West Asians, West Asians are plugged into their cultures. East Asians are plugged into their cultures. Now, like for example, systematically, I had to go through my mind. I had to say, all right, boom. What exists, what does not exist? What's real, what's not real? First off, Europe is not real. Some of y'all get out there and get mad at me and argue with me if you want to. But show me, prove to me that there is a Europe out there. Grab any map. Point it out. And show me where Europe is separated from Asia. It's not. So there's really no Europe. These motherfuckers have set up a mental, a mental idea a system of thought that separates them from the rest of the world when they're connected like everybody else. There is no goddamn Europe. There's only West Asia. And we need to be we need to be clear about that. We need to be bold enough to say that. It's West Asia. Nigga, that's West Asia. You can't fool me. You know what I'm saying? So boom. So when I say West Asia, y'all understand I'm talking about what y'all know what what y'all call Europe. Right? Some people we go a little way and we call it Eurasia. No, it's is West Asia. Let's be let's be 100% clear about it. Boom. One process in my mind that I had to correct. Another process. I'm no longer celebrating Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'm no longer doing that. Why? Because when I wake up, that sets my mind in the process of looking for other people's shit. Right? I'm looking for other people's things. I'm waking up to my principles. I'm waking up to a mojo. I'm waking up to um, Kuji Chagli. I'm waking up to Ujima and Ujama, Nia, Kaumba, and Imani. Why? Why am I waking up to that? Why is it important for me to do that? Because culturally, right? Culturally, it plugs me in to something that's bigger than me. It plugs me in to ideas that, that have helped my people be successful throughout time. Long before the West Asian incursion, long before the Middle Asians incursions, we have used principles to make sure that our lives were running in a certain way. So in order to direct that life energy, in order to direct that our shape, we got to get our minds aligned with culturally appropriate shit. So at least once a week, we should be eating culturally appropriate food. What do I mean by culturally appropriate food, right? Nigga, you're not Mexican. 
You're not Indian. You're not Asian, right? You could go on and indulge in some of those foods sometimes, but every now and then you're going to have to pull out some of that African food. What's some of that African food, Brother Hatim? For those that are interested in it, it's this thing called the African Heritage Diet. Look it up. African Heritage Diet, right? Black eyed peas, yams, right? Not with the, not with the, yeah, and they don't have to have the pork. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at black eyed peas and where, where they come from, if you look at yams and where they come from and the different varieties of yams and the importance that yam played in, in African tradition, you will see there's palm oil. There's all types of greens. Miss Jacqueline Brooks says, just watch what's, what's the health. And we are all going vegan. August 1st, we begin. We must find our life and the ability to recreate and re-envision ourselves through building cultural stabilizers like like you're saying, to stand on our own cultural stabilizers through diet and spirit of our roots. Now, I'm going to say this because one of the things that um, that I got away from was I didn't tell everybody they need to become vegans or they need to become vegetarians because in our culture, eating meat was a very important thing. Now, the, some of the meat that we eat right now is not very healthy, but if you look at our cultural diets, we always incorporated meat, right? But now, this is the question. Is there a way where we could be involved in the process of getting and create, getting that meat and raising that meat, right? Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the vegan or the vegetarian diet, but the point that I'm trying to make is that culturally, we did eat meat. Now, I choose not to eat meat. I, it's not that I can't eat meat. I choose not to eat a lot of meats, right? But for those of you out there who may not be willing to take the vegetarian or the vegan step, there are, when you look at the African heritage diet, you see the chicken, lamb, fish, some beef is on there. Now, this is the, this is the point. If you're not going to eat it, I mean, if you're going to eat it, Get the best, family. It's sort of like when you go into the bar, right? You're not, most of the times, when you go into the bar and you're trying to show off for people, you're not buying from the bottom shelf. If you're going to the top shelf, you're getting the best gin, you're getting the best vodka, you're getting the best cognac, right? I'm going to challenge you to do the same thing for your, for your life. Cows were not designed to eat oats. Chickens were not designed to, to be raised in cages. And, and eat oats and whatever else they're giving them. Chickens was, were, were designed to be walking around and eating bugs and shit. Cows were designed to be walking and eating grass, right? So get that grass fed and get those animals that were allowed to be free in, in a sense or at least experience some fake freedom. You know what I'm saying? I call it fake freedom, right? If you're going to eat meat, you know what I'm saying? There's a healthy way that we can do this. Right, and we don't have to really shut off certain parts of the culture because some of us gonna eat fish, some of us gonna eat meat, some of us gonna drink liquor, some of us gonna do something. But can we do it culturally appropriately? Right. So now, when we start plugging ourselves into the culture, what that does is plug us into a healthy, systematic process, and it plugs us into life-giving principles. As we start going, we start understanding that these life-giving principles, right? will start making things happen for us. Like when I get up here and I do this toast and I say, toast up your ancestors. That's culturally appropriate. When you're at a family reunion, toast up your ancestors. Hell, every day, you should be toasting up your ancestors, whether you plugging into Brother High Tim or you or, or you just sitting at the crib. Every day, you should remember one of your ancestors and take a drink from one of them or, or pour a little bit of water out for them, right? You know what I'm saying? Make some type of sacrifice for them, right? Because they made a sacrifice for you. Because one of the major pieces that I'm trying to get my, my young people to understand as far as directing the mental energy, and I need y'all as adults to really start thinking about this. If you go back, and I, and I say this a lot, if you go back less than, if you go back 20 generations, just 20 generations, that's less than 400 years, just 20 generations, family, it took over a million people to be in the right place at the right time in order to create you. A million people. You are the ultimate point of evolution in your family. And if you ain't doing shit, what is that saying about your family? Um, Sister Jacqueline says, 
but we are not in the processing of meat and fish. We need to have our own gardens as well. The vegetables are ever, are uh, even under attack. Got to get your ambrosia. Hey, I'm working on, I'm working on that right now. I'm able to ship, but it's hot. <laughs> and when it's hot, because I'm not, I'm not killing, I'm not killing the 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 uh, bacteria and yeast in the ambrosia. That shit will blow up. Why is on this way? See, I need people to understand that when I'm doing this ambrosia, I'm not playing. I'm not. I'm not. If you just want kombucha and feel good about just drink some kombucha, go to the grocery store, right? You go to the grocery store, you get you some of that, and, and it'd be a little bit fizzy, but they're, they're carbonating that, which, which is basically they're throwing carbon in it so that it won't, so that it's not alive, right? And this is just some of them. This ain't all of them, right? What I'm telling people is, not only can you get the ambrosia from me, you can get the scoby so that you can start making your own. Because I think that it would be it would be a it it would be a shame for me, and it would be hypocritical for me to be like, look, I got this ambrosia, I got this thing that can help get your gut health together. And I sit up here and I do all these all these talks about the microbiome and the importance of the microbiome and all the diseases. That, that are in our community, I can see right now is coming from our microbiome being out of being out of whack, and I got a possible uh, a possible solution for that. And I told people, oh, the only place you get this from is from me. No, I got Scobies family. I I have done videos for people to show people how to make this themselves. It's green tea, honey, and a Scoby. You can't make that ambrosia. But you can make your own June, or you can make your own kombucha, and I'll show you how to do it. You can make your own, you can make your own, your own sourdough, right? Because remember how bread used to be described as the staple of life, and now bread is killing us. Hell, we can start learning how to make our own bread and make our own pizza, and as as, as Jackie say, start growing our own gardens. This shit is easy, right? Start forming relationships with people where we can start bringing stuff together. Because if the shit hit the fam family, we ain't we can't leave the city. That's the fact of the matter. I see a lot of y'all don't even understand. They be doing military exercises in your community and you don't even know it. If you have ever got up late for work, right? And try to get on the expressway in one place, and you couldn't get on the expressway because it's blocked off. And you go somewhere else and try to get on the expressway, and you can't get on the expressway because it's blocked off. More than likely, there's some type of military, there's some military shit going on, and there's a training because what they're trying to show you, or better yet, what they're trying to practice is cutting off the main thoroughfare for by which everybody know how to get around. All they gotta do is cut off the expressway for most black folks, and we're lost. So we can have the bug out bags and shit like that, but most of us won't even know what to do with them because we won't be able to get be able to get in the car and get to the wilderness. And even we get to the wilderness, the wilderness is already going to be packed. This is why I'm saying, as families and as tribes, we need to be we need to be strategizing within the city. We need to be finding big enough buildings for a lot of us to start piling in when the shit hit the fan. All right, family, we're going to live together for a couple of weeks. We got food saved up. We brought, we done brought our food stores from our homes. We're able to protect the area that we are in, and we're able to go out and get food if we need to. We got the warriors here. We got the nation builders here, the, the, the street the strategic mind, and we got the wisdom of the elders. And let's get it. And dare anybody to violate our borders. Really. So, um... So basically, getting that, that, that mental, that life energy is first about getting our minds right. Right? Like you said, you're going vegan in August 1st, which is right around the corner. Right? You're taking the vegan challenge, which is a major step because you're going to start noticing how your body starts to change. And you're going to have start getting those prebiotics in your body and your microbiome is going to start, start humming because a lot of people don't know this, right? You know how men used to they, they used to joke and say, you got two heads, don't listen to the small one. But that's true. But what the second head is, is not the penis. Excuse me, ladies. It's the gut. The second brain 
is the belly, is the, is, is the microbiome, is the gut bacteria, right? Because this is what's crazy. Everybody talk about serotonin, but nobody tells you that 98% of the serotonin that's created in your body is created in your gut. Neurons are produced by the gut. So for those of you that find it hard to give up chocolate and give up candy and give up some of the, some of the habits that you have, it's because it makes you, in some form or fashion, you're feeding some type of negative bacteria in your body that has mastered the skill of producing a neuron that makes your body feel good every time you take this thing. So this, this, this negative bacteria is able to produce the serotonin that gets into your system because up and down, from up and down your spine, especially around in the gut, you got you got receptors that plug directly into the brain through the vagus nerves. The vagus nerve, which which means the vagabond nerve, which is the nerve that goes from back here all the way down into your digestive system and connect all of all of this stuff that we call that in the gut area. Come on, family. Come on now. You being controlled by your gut. You ain't being controlled by your you ain't being controlled by your penis or your sexual organs. You're being controlled by your gut. My grandmother, um, this is uh Sister Jack. She said, My grandmother, who is a very lucid at age 95, has always talked about gut health. Your health is completely co comprised or enhanced by what it is in your gut. Tell us about kombucha. All right. So when when you start making your own kombucha or you get it from somebody that actually makes it and actually communicates with the scoby and actually let this you know actually have a relationship with it because it's, it's crazy you've got to have a relationship with it right you start producing um a drink that is based on fermentation now first what is fermentation fermentation is basically you take control of the dying process when something ferment is getting older and and you as, as human beings, we find out when things start getting older and they start dying, we start, different things start being released. More nutrients become available to the body when we ferment stuff. So this is why we ferment pickles. This is why we ferment cabbage. This is why we, because it changes it from one thing to another. A cucumber and a pickle come from the same source, but they're two different things. You get certain nutrients from a cucumber, but you get more of the nutrients and different nutrients from what's involved with the pickle, right? So the fermentation process allows you to make more of the nutrients bioavailable to the body. You understand what I'm saying? So now when your gut get it, not only is your gut getting the, 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 the nutrition from the food, but now it's getting the bacteria and the yeast that's helping to digest it. So when you ferment something, you allow the bacteria and the yeast to go to work, right? And you set up an environment where you get the, the, the bacteria and yeast that you want to, to, to do something to, to work. So for example, with ambrosia and with making pickles, the major bacteria that we, that we like to use is lacto, it's called a lactobacteria. Right, so it forms like a lactic acid, and it starts dissolving. It starts dissolving the 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 the, the drink. It start eating the sugar, and as it start eating the sugar, it start releasing certain things. One of the things it release is alcohol. Now, which brings us now, which which is which is something else. A lot of people have have a wrong conception about alcohol is a natural result of the fermenting process. But what happens is that human beings, being greedy in the way we are, we find ways to steal and get the pure alcohol, which is what's killing us. The actual alcohol is not killing us. What's killing us is when individuals get greedy and they want to just take and just take off everything else and just get the natural alcohol. You understand what I'm saying? So vodka, right? A real strong vodka is basically somebody who has taken the natural ingredients of that makes that alcohol and took off everything else and just left the liquor and just left the alcohol all by itself alcohol but all by itself is very destructive but alcohol and wine this is why you could drink wine and get health benefits 
This is why it's hard for you to get drunk on wine because it's such a little, it's just such a little bit amount. That's why when you drink ambrosia, you don't get a buzz. It's just a small amount of alcohol in there that is produced, which is a natural, which is a natural thing, uh, a natural product of the um the fermentation process. So the fermentation process basically make things more bio bioavailable. Now what what kombucha or I don't make kombucha. I make June. June is, I believe, the older cousin of kombucha because kombucha requires refined sugar and black tea. All right? Refined sugar and black tea. How long has refined sugar been around? You know, they tell you use cane sugar, right? It still requires a process for you to get the cane sugar. While June is basically made from green tea, and honey, right? We have had honey for a very long time. Honey by itself has all types of healing properties. I won't go into the healing properties, but you can look them up yourself. So now, what happens is when you take that honey with all the healing process, with all the healing process, like for one one thing, like for example, next time you get a cut, if you got some pure honey, not that honey that you just go to the regular store and get, when you got that pure unrefined that unrefined honey, that unprocessed honey, that undamaged honey, because this is what they do in the society. They sterilize everything, right? We believe that bacteria and yeast is bad. Some of it is, without a shadow of a doubt. But a lot of it is necessary for our survival. See, uh, most of us don't even understand that as far as when we talk about the microbiome family, there's more, there's more bacteria, yeast, fungi, and other things inside of you than, there's, there, than there are human cells. As a matter of fact, for every one human cell you have in you, you have 10 times, you have 10 other, right? So you are more bacteria, yeast, fungi, and other shit than you are human. Most people are. And if you don't, and anything I'm saying, do your research. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not one of those to be like, listen, this, this, this is true. Fuck that. Do your research. Do you have some recommendations of brands of kombucha to find in the store? And what about alkaline water? Do you use it anymore? If so, what do you use it for? Now, there are some kombuchas, right? You have to, because because I make my own, I don't even have to look out there. I make my own. I would suggest, Jackie, get with me. I could mail you a, I could, I could mail you a SCOBY and get you started on brewing your own. Oh, I can mail you some ambrosia. Either way, but I can get you start making your own. But you can do research, and then as you start doing research in your area, you'll start finding people that actually make the ambrosia. That don't kill the bacteria and yeast that you will be able to get it or make the kombucha, right? I chose to make June because I chose to make June because I felt that our people had enough sugar flowing in our community. I'm just being honest. We we if you look at all the food around us, all of it has sugar in it. I wanted another form of sweetener, so I chose honey. Honey has historic. We have a historical relationship with honey. It's historically is 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 uh, culturally appropriate, and the healing properties of honey is incredible. Next time, like I said, next time you get a cut, put some raw honey on there, see what happens. Right. Honey helps soothe, helps soothe a sore throat. Honey does a whole lot of stuff. So when you ferment this honey, you get a whole, you get, you get more stuff that's released to you. It also helps with allergies. And then on top of that, when you throw that green tea on top of that, family, listen, green tea helps fight um, Alzheimer's. Green tea helps you stay mentally alert. Um, mentally alert. Green tea. I mean, just look up the benefits. So now when you mix that green tea and that honey and you take this thing called a SCOBY, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, S-C-O-B-Y, symbiotic. Some people say culture. Some people say colony. I choose the word culture because culture is very important to me, right? And I understand there's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, S-C-O-B, that's a SCOBY, right? And that's the major piece in making the ambrosia, you put the scoby in there. The scoby seals off the tea. It seals off the honey and the tea so that nothing else can get in there and it starts formulating and changing the tea and the honey into 
um, the June, which you could then, after three to five days, you could take out and you could look at it. You could see the difference. You could taste the difference. And you could start adding your own little recipes to it. And it's powerful. Now, the alkaline water. On none of this, I'm an expert. I'm like you. I study and I look. But I get kind of concerned when anything becomes a fad because I got everybody coming at me talking about alkaline water, alkaline water, alkaline water, alkaline, alkaline, alkaline. Now, but a lot of people don't understand that there's a certain threshold below which where where, where you got water and alkaline. It's like they, you got you got acidic and you got alkaline. They both belong on a, a chart together. So at a certain pH level, things are acidic, and at a certain pH level, things are alkaline, right? Now, I want you to remember one thing whenever you're dealing with anything. Our ancestors always dealt with balance. That's why myot was a very important thing for us. That's why coming to the scales when you died was a very important thing to us because we always talk about balance. So I want to, I want to preface that. This this statement I'm about to make with that first. So, all of a sudden, we got people going crazy about alkaline water, right? But no, I mean, and but nobody really talks about the fact that at a certain acidic level, at the lower end, like a six point six point four something like that, nothing can live in the water because it's acidic. But then there's a point of alkalinity. Well, not to live in the water, right? So it, it's a small threshold, like between 6.4 to 7.5, where something could be so acidic at a 6.4 and below that nothing could live in it, right? And something could be so um, alkaline that nothing could live in it, or it does your body no good. And so some things can be too alkaline. And some of us are running out here getting all this alkaline water and eating all this, this whole alkaline diet, right? Not really realizing that we can shift our body all the way to being too goddamn alkaline, which is just as bad as being too acidic. So we got to find that healthy balance for us. Now, I can't tell you what the healthy balance is for you, right? And I, now what I use, I try to find spring water. And of course, if it's spring water, it's, the alkalinity is going to be a little bit higher, right? The alkalinity is going to be a little bit higher. But ultimately, we got to get our body in balance. Because in your body, you have processes that use acid. For example, the way you digest the very food you eat. Your body, your body uses an acid. What happens when you put something alkaline in acid? That's acidic. It shuts down the process. So we got to we we have to be very we got to be very careful, especially when it comes to some of these fans, right? And we got to do we got to do our research, but then we also got to keep our life giving principles in mind. One of the life giving principles we got the seven we got the seven virtues of mind: truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, balance, order, and harmony. Right? One of those being balance. What is the balance point here? Right? So, I hope I answered your question. I guess I ain't going to be able to do my other damn show. But, yo, I really appreciate, um, I really appreciate everybody that, that's coming in. I got, um, right now, oh, I got Yolan Carter. I got Yousef, the instant, instant man up. Um, Chantel Nixon dropped in. Uh, Will, what is the water you use described to? What is black water? All right. <laughs> Culturally appropriate water. All right. Now, check this out, Jackie. The four things that you need to be able to live a healthy and powerful life. Are you ready? Proper breathing. Culturally appropriate breathing. Through the nose, family. Through the nose. A lot of y'all are mouth breathers. Look up the research on mouth breathing. And how it affects your body and how it fucks up your body. All right? Proper breathing. You ready for the next one? Culturally appropriate water. What type of water did we did we drink before the incursions? More than likely, it was either well water or, or, or a spring or uh, uh, some water that we would go down and gather from 
a, a pond or a lake or it was it was natural spring type water, right? Some some of they call it um, spring water or you got that water that's uh, artesian water that's basically come from underground and they don't have to really, it don't flow, it just rises up and they're able to get it out. So culturally appropriate water, right? Then we got culturally appropriate foods. What are some of the culturally co appropriate foods and herbs for African people? You can look that up. It's called the African Heritage Diet. Check it out, family. Check it out, right? Because, you know, sometimes we get extreme because I'm very extreme with shit. So we get very extreme with shit and we can get all the way away from what we what we eat. Because now I want you to understand this. Food is part of culture. Because food comes from the land. And every people have, have a relationship with the land. Where the land that we come from produce certain food so that we can survive. That's why yams. Like when I, yams is one of those major foods that as black folks, we got to really start really looking at, you know what I'm saying? And, and really, real damn, you know, because we done built civilizations up on yams. Yam is a fucking staple, right? So go on and check out the African heritage diet. Last one is culturally appropriate movements. What do I mean by culturally appropriate movements, right? Um, dancing. Uh, I mean, we got to move. You got to move. You got to get your ass up and move, right? And and other than that, what else do we need? You know what I'm saying? Keep it culturally appropriate and keep on building. Um, You got it? Did you get it? Breathing, water, food, movement. Uh, African openness to the tree of life. You can find a link for it at giamijourney.com. This is one of this 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 book is a classic. This is a life changer. And it's very simple, right? It's very simple. Um what, what's uh what's up, grandson? You still hey, can you still do them black backflips? All right. So Facebook, I'm out of here. I ain't gonna even get a chance to do my other show. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do a quick one. All right, hey, are you into parkour? Are you doing parkour? Because that's some of the stuff that you was doing anyway. And can you teach parkour? I need a parkour teacher. All right, well, hey, throw up some questions. I stick around. All right, so another piece of the uh, fermenting process that's missing. Don't know what what don't know what that is. What 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 is another part process? Another part of the process is that we're missing. Like for example, bread is the staple of life. If you look at all cultures, all cultures have some form of bread. Now, what happened to the bread process? We done turned it over to somebody else, right? One important pieces of bread, family. I want y'all. I want y'all to check this out. I want you to type in fermentation. I want you to go to the computer. Oh, parkour. Parkour is basically. Um, parkour is. It's not really a sport. Free running is a sport. Parkour is a practice of looking at the world in a different way and being able to get over the obstacles. So it's, it's P-A-R, I think K-O-U-R. And basically, now check this out. So if you ever seen somebody doing free running where you, you'll see a young person running and they'll jump up on a wall and they're able to climb up the wall and they're able to jump across buildings on, on concrete and roll and not get hurt and get up and keep on running. Basically running from the police. You know what I'm saying? But it's really an art form called parkour. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that the inventors of this art form called parkour study African tribes and the natural movements that they had. 
Um, my, uh, uh, Mr. Yalan says parkour is basically moving and escaping in the most effective way, right? Perfecting the skill of being able to adapt the environment, adapt to your environment, and being able to get away um, as quick as possible. And it's a modern. It, it, they say it's a modern piece, but if you trace the history of it, if you look, it's basically warrior training. That's all it is. Getting over walls, getting over obstacles with as little problems as possible. Now, back to the bread. If you look up fermentation, family, you will be surprised how many foods are really fermenting. The coffee that you're drinking. Fermentation. The teas that you like. Fermentation. The chocolate that you love. Fermentation. Capoeira is basically a martial art, which is a, a very culturally appropriate art form, right? Because it plugs in the culture, the music of, of Africa through by, by way of the, in, the intervention of Portuguese, which is a very beautiful thing. Parkour is very culturally appropriate, a culturally appropriate art. It's a warrior training piece. Um, but it's, it's, it's uh, African dance, dancing and moving the body, you know what I'm saying? Um, some forms of yoga, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's, there's certain breathing exercises that we can start adding. You saw my kid, oh yeah, yeah, I see your kids in class. Are they good now? And, when, and this is what's beautiful about Capoeira. Once you got the basics, I ain't saying you don't need to teach it no more. But once you got the basics, you're able to make it yours. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, but let me see. Bread, right? I'm about to put this in the oven. Bread used to be the staple of life. But one of the processes that's missing out of it now is the true fermentation process. Like this right here, this dough that I got right here that I made right here, this dough has been... This dough has been fermenting for about three days. That white stuff you see on top is not mold. That's that's butter that I put on so that it won't stick. It's hard to keep the clay. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard because some people just want the martial arts piece, not realizing that the dance is just as important, the song is just as important, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, and, and it's hard, and, and and it's hard because a lot of people are not willing to pay. Like you, you may be one of the rare people that that's paying on a regular basis, and then on top of that, space is at a premium. So what you may need to do is use some of your connections to help the Capoeira instructor to get a place so that he could meet on a regular basis. I would suggest maybe a school over the weekend, right? a school over the weekend if you have a community school mm -hmm. or something like that use that school to help them establish a place where they could practice on a regular basis because schools during the weekends and schools during um evenings in most cases you got you have you have thir 10 10 to 30 rooms mm -hmm that are empty. So we have to start learning how to plug into some of the uh, some of the community stuff so that we can use it. You got empty, you got you got empty buildings that are closed down in our communities called schools that we're not plugging into, that we put tax dollars to pay for these motherfuckers. So in a sense they work for us. Church space, church space is a little bit different, right? Because church space you got to one, when you do a cap weather, they're going to be singing about stuff that might offend some people at churches. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with them saluting the ancestors, so you got to make sure it's a progressive church. But churches are community spaces, right? But it's spaces that are funded by that community. So you got to respect their faith. But schools, you ain't got to worry about that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Because schools are community, are community funded by everybody. You know what I'm saying? When you pay a toll out where you live, 
money's going to the school. When you buy a goddamn lottery ticket, money's going to the school. When you look at your check and it's missing some money, right, it's going to the school. So, so, so those buildings need to be able to be accessed and used for us within our community. For example, another piece too, some of the school buildings in our communities need to be some of the focal points for some of us that's doing tribe building if the shit hit the fan in any form or fashion, that should be a meeting place and a place that we take over in our communities so that we can get all the families and we know that everybody is safe up in that motherfucker. Right? And we can have the warriors right down on the bottom floor ready for when motherfuckers is trying to do their encouraging shit. Right? And we can we we could do we could in in a sense do our last stand because like I said, most of us ain't gonna be able to get to the woods. You know, the church owns a lot of halls in their own community centers. That's where one of our friends teach karate um, regularly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not doubting that. What I'm saying is, if what you're teaching will come into conflict with what they're doing, right? Because the community that the church get their money from, in many cases, is their congregation, who all has the same belief, who all falls up under a pharaoh. Or a pastor, young, you know, we call them pastors now, but a pharaoh or a chief, right? And if what you're teaching does not align with what the chief and his council believes in, they can automatically kick you out. But you have less of a problem with that with uh with with with, with school supposedly. If you especially if you have a relationship. I'm sorry. I had to put my 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 stuff in a. I got put my um. I had to put my bread in the oven because I'm gonna have to bribe my mom because I'm late to pick up my girls because y'all see my girls is not with me right now today. So this will be my only video. So let me get into what I'm doing now. For those that take the 21 day challenge, right? You get um a, like a little diary sent to you that you could print out that you could do or you could do it over line uh, online, huh? You know, that's, that's you. Um, another book that I would say just to look at is something called The Sustainable Revolution. You see the R kind of marked out there. The authors are Julian Burnbaum and Lewis Fox. And what they do is they're going through, they're looking at this thing called permaculture. Now, yesterday, I ran through... Um, the rules of permaculture, and you and unlike, I didn't go into any major discussion about permaculture or you know because usually I read stuff and then I start breaking it down, but the principles of permaculture, right? And I'm because I'm 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 looking for things that can be used to build community, um, whether it's just among black people or whether it's in my in my school because one of the issues that we have is we have a cultural issue. Throughout, throughout the black community, it's a cultural issue. We are doing culturally inappropriate things because we 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 have not lined up with life giving principles. The principles we have lined up with don't give life to us. The principles we have been given give life to others. Like um, Yvette Cornell and the Funky Academics say on their show on a consistent basis, um, they say that this society is built up on black failure, right? They make money from us because, I mean, really, when you think about it, when we were brought here, we were brought here as property. And the goal was to extract every piece of income, every 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 dime that they can get out of us as property. And that whole mind state has never went away, right? So we have to start learning how to deal with the system in a way we are able to politically and economically change our relationship to this country, right? Because most of us are not going nowhere. Like, you know, because I went to Africa, and I would love to stay over there, but my mama here, my cousin's here, some of y'all here, you know what I'm saying? I'm going all the way over there. I don't even see y'all now. So, you know, I'm 6,000 miles away. Y'all know I ain't. Y'all, a lot of y'all know how I roll. Y'all know how I get down. So I don't want to be that far away from y'all, right? I go over there and visit, but this is my home, right? 
This is where my grandfather laid roots. This is where my grandfather bought his house in Akron. My grandmother, you know what I'm saying? This is where they made a home for us, right? This is where my great grandparents made a home from us. And I could go back through the history and I could talk about how we were snatched up and brought over here. But in us being snatched up and brought over here, that was a process in itself that when you really look at it, we were reborn as a new people and we got roots over here now. It's important for us to plug into our roots over there, but it's also important for us to recognize our roots and our stake in this place right here, right now. So in the principles of permaculture, they talk about observe and interact, catch and store energy, obtain a yield, apply self-regulation, accept feedback, use and value, value renewable resources and services, produce no waste, design from patterns to details, integrate rather than segregate, use small and slow solutions, use and value diversity, use edges and value the marginal, creatively use and respond to change. All right, so those are the principles. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share with everybody was the ethics of permaculture. And then I'm, then I'm gonna go and get up off of here. Um, the process, and this is from page 15, the ethics of permaculture. The process of providing for people's needs within ecological limits requires a cultural revolution. Inevitably, such a revolution is fraught with many confusions, risks, and inefficiencies, and we appear to have little time to achieve it. In this context, the idea of a simple set of principles that give universal application is attractive. These principles can be divided into ethics and principles and design principles. Ethics act as constraints on survival instincts and other personal and social constructions of self-interest that tend to drive human behavior in any society. So ethics is what helps keep us sane and allows us to stop from sliding into uh, crazy behavior or culturally inappropriate behaviors, right? They are more inclusive um, views of who and what constitute us and a longer term understanding of good and bad outcomes. The greater the power of human civilization due to the energy available and the greater the concentration and scale of power within society, the more critical ethics become in ensuring long-term cultural and even biological survival. This ecological function view of ethics makes them central in the development of, of a culture for energy descent. Like design principles, the ethics were not explicitly listed in early permaculture literature. Since the development of the permacultural design course and ethics have generally been covered by three broad maxims. Care for the earth, listen. Care for the earth, husband, soil, forest, and water. Care for the people, look after self, kin, and community. Fair, share, set limits to consumption and reproduction and redistribute, redistribute um, surplus, right? So these are, these are the basic ethics, right? Care for the earth, care for your people, fair share, right? You know what I'm saying? Fair share, right? You know, so, and we're moving into a time where eventually, no matter what type of skills you got, you may not be able to find work in a way that our, our grandparents and our parents found. And, you know, some of y'all, we are those parents. We might be the last generation's the last generation working like we're working now. And we got to understand this. So we got to really start preparing our young people for what's coming in the future. So what's coming in the future? We're going to have a lot of automation, right? Um, we're going to have, uh, we already using these computers on our hips and shit. I'm, I, I'm broadcasting. My sister Jackie is in Maryland. I got people uh, coming in from Texas. Uh, hell, uh, people from all over the world can be listening and watching right now. So right now, we are putting, in a sense, a TV station out of business. And what, what comes with a TV station? A TV station has jobs. You know what I'm saying? We're putting a radio show out of business because I do podcasts, right? So people don't have to go to the radio stations no more. They come to the podcast 
and get the show and, and get the information. What does that mean? That means that people are going to be out of work. You know what I'm saying? Amazon is talking about having drones deliver packages. What does that mean? That means that all the delivery drivers that Amazon has, they don't need no more. Especially with the acquisition, because I want y'all to check this out. Especially with them acquiring Whole Foods. Now, what this means is that now, not only do they have the little Amazon stores that's popping around, popping up in these cities so that they can make it easier for them to get that same day delivery for uh, those people that's on Prime like myself, right? Which a lot of people don't even know, 58%. This, this is crazy. 58% of Americans or 58 I think 58 percent of Americans got Amazon Prime or let's say 58 percent of the people polled had Amazon Prime that's 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 incredible now I want y'all to think about that right so now you have these businesses that's that's booming that's growing like wildfire that's putting motherfuckers out of work What happens when people can no longer not only afford shit off of Amazon, but afford shit at the grocery store because they can't find work? We complain about healthcare right now, this shit. We we healthcare is healthcare is just the tip of the iceberg. What happens when 60 million people no longer can work? Family, we better tribe up. I'm just saying, we better tribe up and we better start getting our, our children geared towards this type of future. What type of skills do we have our children work on? What type of skills do we have our children build? That's the question, right? But hey, I'm about to get up off, off of here. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and this is going to be my talk for the day because I usually do stuff just for my YouTube fam. But I'm I'm combining. I want to thank uh, Sister Jackie for uh, for hitting me up, Brother Yon, um, Yon for hitting me up. All right, I love you too, Yon. I see you had to go. All right, peace, y'all. I'm lifting my glass, saying I'm toasting you. You need to use Amazon New Grocery Connect to transport your ambrosia. I got to stop it from blowing up first. <laughs> you know, listen. If it if it get too hot, right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm working on how I'm gonna do that. I'm whether I'm gonna use dry ice or what. I'm I'm coming up. I'm working on it, right? Because one sister had had me. Um, I had to deliver some stuff to Arizona, and you know it's hot as hell out there. So as soon as my ambrosia hit Arizona, ho 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 ho! The first time it was cool. The second time, uh uh, ambrosia was like, <laughs> we let me out this goddamn box. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I'm going to work on that. But yo, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And Brother Hot Tim is out because I got to go get my babies and I got to go get a book from the library because I got to continue my studies. All right, I'm out. I make my pizza when I come home tonight. Y'all done took me off my task. Peace.